it says that we we accept that that uh, our Creator has endued us with certain inalienable rights, which include the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so it recognizes that we do have a Creator. And he has endowed every man with inalienable rights. That's rights that cannot be taken away with men. I mean, so that, no matter what they tell you, you have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Doesn't it guarantee you happiness, but it guarantees you the pursuit of happiness. Amen. So we have a right to those things by God. And no man can take those rights away from you. So no matter what kind of laws the government makes, every person has those rights. Even babies that are not born yet, they are people too. Amen. They have rights. Just like you have rights and everybody else has rights. They have rights. They have a right to life. Amen. So I just want to share that with you. I also want to I also want to remind you that we don't have these guys died for us and I was, I was served in the military and I was in, in the Vietnam era uh, veteran. I have a hat that says Vietnam era veteran on it. And I was during that period where we were in Vietnam and uh, people laid down their lives for us so we could be free. Yes. We're able to be here in this church because people cared enough to lay down their lives for us so we could be free. Yeah. So we could be free. Amen. So we could be free. And Jesus laid down his life for us so we could be free too. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this than a man to lay down his life for his friends. And he said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Yes, thank you. And we need to also remember all that God has done for us. All his great and precious promises. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. That's in the Old Testament, I know. But that is the scriptures. So, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. That means we need to obey God. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. God wants us to, to obey him so we can possess the promises of God. Yes. You see, God had promised the children of Israel a land full of milky honey. All they had to do was obey God and do what God said and believe his report. You see, God said, I've given you this land. Now go possess it. We have to obey God if we want to possess the things of God. Yes. Hallelujah. That Hallelujah. thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know that what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and to fed thee, and he fed thee with manna. You know, God did supernatural. He poured out manna from heaven every day, six days a week. If they ate, if they collected more than was supposed to in that day, it rotted by the next day. But on the sixth day, they could collect two days worth. And it never rotted. It's a, it, it it's a miracle. Yes, it it's is. all a miracle. Amen. Yeah. I hear people say, oh, if, if miracles happened every day, they wouldn't be miracles. Miracles happen every day and yes, they're still amen. miracles. Amen. Amen. Glory. Miracles happen every day and they're still miracles. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. That he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread alone or only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. You see, that's what Jesus quoted to the devil. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That thy raiment wax not old. Isn't that amazing? God made it where they supernaturally, their clothes never wore out. Thank you, Lord. Forty years. Glory. Your clothes never wore out. Their shoes never even wore out. Neither did thy feet swell for these 40 years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, it's right to spank your kids, folks. So the Lord God chasteneth thee. So if God reproves you and rebukes you and chastises you, that's a good thing. Yes, it Amen. is. It doesn't seem like it's a good time. When you're spanking your kid, they think it's a terrible thing. That's really a good thing. 
Why? Because it's going to cause them to make adjustments in their life. So when we get chastised by the Lord, it causes us to make adjustments in our life. Thank you, Lord. That's a good thing. Amen. Glory to God. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways to fear him. Now people say we shouldn't be afraid of God. Well, if you're doing evil, you better be afraid of God. Amen. Because he is a God of judgment. He will judge. The Bible says it's appointed once in a man to die and then the judgment. And you, every man's going to be judged according to their own works. I don't get to heaven just because my parents live for God. My kids don't get to heaven just because I live for God. Every man, every person gets judged according to their own works. Amen. And if we have kids that are not living for God, we need to be praying for them. That's Amen. right. Thank you, Lord. And we never need to quit praying for them as long as That's we've right. got breath. Hallelujah. Why? Because God needs us to stand in the gap so he can deliver Amen. people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of, full of brooks and water and fountains of deep that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. That was the kind of land we need to be walking in, folks. Yes. This land full of abundance. Amen. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig grass. When thou eatest the fruit, well, the, what, when thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he giveth thee. You see, it's really God's favor on our lives that we receive everything we receive. Yes. We need to give God praise and glory. We need to give him the first fruits of all our increase. Yes. We need to put God first in our finances. I know a lot of people want to hold on to everything that they've got. I picked up a, a man about midnight, Friday night. I went out, I went out at 8 o'clock and and start doing some Uber and Lyft driving Friday night. And, and if everybody else is getting tired, I'm, I'm going to go out and do some Uber and Lyft driving. So I got home at 1.30 in the morning. But anyhow, I picked this guy up, at, up way south of Kansas City. It was down by Stillwell, Kansas. I picked him up, and, and uh, I had to go into this real exclusive uh, division, home division. All the houses were million, several million dollar houses in this division. I had to go through this gate where there's a guard out there standing and he said, who are you here to pick up? And I told him the name of the guy. And, and I, I got back here and I picked him up. And he was drunk. And so, so, so he didn't want to drive because he was drunk. And so I took him as I was taking him. Uh, he said, oh, you're a pastor. I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. And, and he said, you know, I used, to, I used to be in the Assemblies of God when I was growing up. And I said, you know, I, I used to grow up. I grew up in the Assemblies of God too. And he was a drunk. And he said, he said, well, I only get drunk when I play golf. And I played golf today. But he was really drunk. <laughs> and, you know, I think, I think I had some influence on his life through our conversation. But I think that's why God had me go out that night, really. I had, I had four rides, and that was one of them. And, and, and you know, he, he was talking about all the success he'd had in life. He's about, uh, he graduated high school in 1990. So he's quite a few years younger than I am. But uh, I graduated high school in 1974. But uh, he, he's, a, he's a, a developer and stuff like that. He's made millions of dollars, but, but he's turned into a drunkard. You know, the Bible says no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of God. So, so we, need to, we need to reach out to these people. He's fallen down. And I said, well, I don't drink. I said, so you're safe while I'm driving. So, so anyhow, but we need, to, we need to make stands. We need to be a light. Just because in this world, everybody seeks to get rich in this world. And we, we all would like to have, you know, money. Because why? Because so that I can be a blessing. We need to think about others before ourselves. If we will, if we will pray, instead of praying for God for just enough to get by, if we'll pray for God to, for more than enough, God will help us to get more than enough. If I get my mind on blessing other people, God's able to get more money through me. So he can get more money to me, so he can get more money through me. And so we need to live to give, not live just to hold on and build up for ourselves. The day is coming. The day is coming that we will all die if, we, if Jesus didn't come back first. 
We will all, it's appointed once in a man to die and then the judgment. Everything you've built up in this life, it won't amount to anything when you're dead. That's right. But what you build up in heaven, that will amount to something. Yes, it will. That will amount to, store up your treasure in heaven where moth and dust does not eat it, does not corrupt it. Rust does not corrupt it. Store up your treasure in heaven. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. Okay? Thank you. Don't worry about stuff. Thank you, Father. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Notice, when God blesses us, we should be givers. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and are full, thou hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, that thou hast, that thou hast is multiplied, thine heart be lifted up. And that's what happens to a lot of people. Now forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee into the land of Egypt, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, okay? Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein the fiery serpents and the scorpions and the drought, where there was no water, and brought thee forth water out of the rock of the flint. God did supernatural. He said, remember the supernatural things I did for you yes. while you were hurting, yes. while you were in hunger, yes. while you were thirsty. When, when the snakes were biting you, remember that I delivered you. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do good at the, the latter end. And thou say in thine heart, and thou say in thine heart, by my power and by my might, I've gotten this me this well. It's not by our power, it's only by God that gives us the ability yes. to get this well. Amen. And thou sayest in thine heart, by my power have I gotten this well. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. And he yet does it for this purpose, that he may establish his covenant that he swear unto thy fathers. You see, God gives us extra so we can be a blessing. So we can establish the covenant of God in the earth as it is this day. And it shall be if thou do not do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. We've got a choice, folks. We can either obey God. We can either believe the promise of God. We can even either believe the good report or we can believe the evil report. We can decide I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just going to do it because God, it wasn't God didn't do anything for me. I did all the work to get this money. Well, listen, God gave you the ability to do that work. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Yes. He didn't give it you the ability to do it so that you could just reap stuff upon yourself. Now, God wants you to walk in blessings. He wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to have more than enough. But he wants you to be a blessing. Amen. He just does that so you can have extra to give unto every good work. Yes. Turn me to John chapter 15. 